Hey everybody, Calems here bringing you a Voodoo tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover your basic bar configurations, show you how to do your keybinds, and also help you to set up indicators as well. So Voodoo is a raid frame replacement add-on and it helps you to be able to mouse over anyone in your raid and be able to cast healing spells or actions on them. So it makes it really easy and really efficient and I'm going to show you how to set that up and get you raid ready. So what you want to do once you've loaded up Voodoo is you're going to want to open up the options tab. There are two easy ways that you can go about doing that. The first is going up to your mini map, finding the Voodoo icon and left clicking on that. That will open up your options menu here. The second way to do it is to type in backslash voodoo space opt and that will also open up this options tab here. So when you first open voodoo it will bring you to this general tab. We are not going to come here we're going to get you up and raid ready as quick as possible so we're going to go down here to the move tab and left click on that. Once you've clicked on that you will see that you have eight groups all set up. Um, what we want to do is come up here to 20 or 40 if you like and left click on any of these. Then we're going to come to this test button and we're going to hold it down with a left click. This is what your raid frames are going to look like when you're in, in raid. Okay, so we are going to configure how these look. So say you want to add an extra tab for pet healing. What you do is come down here to the plus button, left click on the plus button and as you can see a new group opened up at the end here. We are going to left click on this choose button here and you'll see two extra tabs open up. So up here is the type. We're going to left click on the arrow here and it gives you three different options. So you can arrange that particular tab as a group, say group 9, or into classes, but for this purpose we are going down here into special, and the value tab here opens up, so we're going to left click on the arrow here, and it opens up and gives you an array of options to choose from for your bar, but because we're setting up a pet bar we are going to scroll down to the pets, left click on that, and then we're going to left click on OK here. So when we go back up here to the test button, we're going to left click and hold. As you can see, it's brought up all of the pets that are in raid at the moment. So for me, I don't often, uh, I'm not often allocated pet healing, so I am going to remove that tab by clicking, left clicking on the X here, X, and it's gone. So say you want to be a main tank healer or you are a main tank healer and you want to make one of these groups a main tank heal. What we're going to do is we're going to go here to group 1, left click on the choose button, go up into type and left click on the arrow, scroll down to special again, and main tanks is already automatically selected because it's the first option in the tab. We're going to left click on OK, then we're going to go back up to the test button. And we're going to left click and hold and that will be your main tank group. That's all that will show is whoever's uh, marked as your tanks, they will show up in that group there. So I am going to reset that back to group 1. That is handy if you are a main tank healer, but you don't have to have it set up if you don't want. Alright, so those are the groups. You can also drag these around and mix the groups up if you want to. For me, it's just easier to keep them all in order. Next panel we are going to is the Panels tab. And we're going to left click on the Panels tab here. So the Panels tab is where it is going to really help you with the bar configuration, the way that it looks. So as you can see I have all of my bars vertically aligned, but if you wanted to have your bars horizontally aligned, you can just go up to here, alignment, and left click in the box. 
and your groups are vertically aligned that way. You have this option of bottom up as well. Both, or you can have one at a time. Up to you really. I have mine vertically aligned, it's just easier for me. Next is sizing. So just as, it, as the button implies, it, it helps you to resize your bars. So we can make them taller, wider, make the spaces in between them bigger. And we can increase the panel scale as well, if you wanted. So I like my bars closer together so that I don't have to go too far to mouse over heal anybody. So that about looks good to me. The next up we're going to go to the bars. So what this does is helps with the background texture as well up here in bar texture. So I'll show you examples of that. It's really up to you what you like. Knock yourself out, pick whatever you like. That just helps you with the look of things. I stay with the classic blizzard bar. Over here are custom settings for your mana bar height. We'll come back to that one um, because we are going to add in healer mana bars. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. Come down here to bar color. Basically, that's exactly what it is. It's the bar color. Um, so I have mine set as class colors. <laughs> that sounded dumb. <laughs> it's the bar color. But... Um, I have mine set as class colors because as you know there are squishier classes than others um, and when those squishier classes are taking a bit more damage you want to focus heals on them so for example in bwl when you're going when you've got a mage who's doing the techies or mages doing the techies uh, you're going to want to focus heals on them so it's easy for me to remember mages are light blue paladins are pink hunters are green etc etc so that you can um, focus heals on the people that are most likely to need them. So that's your bars. The next tab we have here are headers. I don't normally have my headers on just because my bars are vertically aligned. So I know group one, two, three, four, five, three to eight are all aligned vertically. So I'm going to turn mine off. But if you wanted your uh, headers to be showing, you can increase the space the size of the tabs and just play around up here. Not really super important uh, to get yourself up and running, but if you are someone that wants to do all of that all in one go and make it super special, uh, knock yourself out. This is the place to do it. Right, so we're going to scroll down to text next. And the text is exactly that, how people's names are going to show up. I've got mine set to yellow, but you can left click in this text bar here and change the color to any color you want. Easy as. Okay. Um, the next one you can play around with the text size, how big or how small you want somebody's name to show up. It's all easy. Add an outline to it, take the shadow off, put the shadow on. So that gives you another way to uniquely um, make your raid frames your own. Those are the texts. Next up we have the hot icons. So this one here, I have my hot icons showing up on the bottom left, but you can pick wherever you want your hot icons to show up. That way you can differentiate between uh, your hots and say a druid's hots or another priest's hots. And that there, my friends, is the panels tab to help you with your bar configurations and make them unique to yourself and your playing style. Okay, so one of the things that I forgot to mention here in the hot icon icons tab is that you can show your timers inside uh, your hot icon. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to text options, left click on timer, and if you imagine that the grey background here is your hot, this is what the timer inside your hot is going to look like. So you can align it however you like to by dragging this top bar here. I like mine quite centered. And you can also scale the size that you like. Um, you can also click on any of these circles here, left click on them to choose where you'd like it to be. Otherwise, you can use the sliding bar at the top. You can also uh, arrange your font into anything you want as well. Um, it standardly comes in Arial Blacks and that looks good to me. So I'm going to left click on OK because it looks good. And that is your hot icon tab. Next up, we're going to have a look at the general tab here and we're going to left click into general. As you can see, the RAID frames disappeared, so it's easy as to get them back. All you have to do is left click here in the move panel again, and then left click back into general. And your RAID frames are back. So you might be brought back to the general tab. If you are, you just scroll down to the indicators tab and left click into that. So indicators are things that are indicating what's going on in your RAID. And we're going to set those up now. So at the top here, you'll see this black box with a red frame around it. So if you imagine this uh, black line here is your RAID frame and the red line on the outside are your indicators, um, that is what whatever you set this box to is going to look like. So I'm going to give you an example of that. Uh, we are going to set this box up here as an aggro RAID frame. So anyone in your RAID that is taking aggro, their RAID frame will light up in red. So how you do that is you left click into this arrow here. You'll have this aggro indicator bar and we'll click on that. But what it does is it only indicates to you who's taking aggro. So if you scroll down a little bit more and you scroll down to multi and aggro, uh, what that will do is also have a target frame. Wherever you mouse over, that will light up in whatever color you choose, and I'll show you how we can config configure that as well. And you'll see the red frame here is aggro, and when you mouse over people, you can also have a frame there as well. So that's why we hit multi and aggro. So to configure this, we go into left click into more, and you can pick the size of the frame that you want. I like the size 3, so I'm going to choose that. You can also play around with the textures that you like, um, but I like plain white because it's a nice solid color. And so I'm going to left click here on done. Uh, if you wanted to change the color of the indicator, you will left click here into edit and come down here to item and left click inside that. And you can click on any color you like to configure that to your particular liking. So I like red because it really pops out at me. It's like, help me. So that is where I am going to stay. I'm happy with the way that looks. So I am going to click on OK. Left click on OK. Uh, the next one is your mouse over target frame. So that is number three here, mouse over single. So we're going to left click into here and this teal color shows up. If you want to change that, you just left click into that and change the color accordingly. Once you're satisfied with the color that you've chosen for your RAID frames, and all you have to do is mouse over any of these names and they'll show you what it's going to look like. Once you're happy with that, you can left click on OK. And that is your aggro bar and your target indicators done. Next up, we're going to have a look at mana bars uh, because that's pretty important as well. So we're going to come up here. It's automatically uh, shown as mana bar. So we're going to left click here on this arrow. And then we're going to scroll down to mana. There are four different options to choose from. Um, the top two are really the only ones that I use. So 
mana bars all powers that's everyone in your raid who has mana and you will see that uh, at the bottom of all of their raid frames if that's the selection that you choose so I'll click on it just to show you what it looks like um, but as a healer I'm not really interested in anyone else's mana except for healers so I am going to click here on mana healer only and the reason I have heal only activated is because that will help me know who is running low on mana um, and if you've been allotted uh, certain healer groups uh, if anyone in your particular group is running low on mana and you see that those heals are running low then that gives you the opportunity to be able to uh, maybe cast a few more heals on the group it lets you know where you need to be focusing your heals the most if your healers are out of mana so that's why I have mana healer bars only open so what you can also do is left click here into more and have a play around with the textures if you like that's really up to you this is for you to um, make unique to your own style of gameplay and what you like so we're going to hit edit in here I don't really play around in this box because I don't feel like I really need to um, but if you want to knock yourself out while we're here in mana bars we are going to go into the panels bar here we're going to left click into that because we are going to configure what our mana bars look like so the way that you do that is left click into panels head up here and left click into bars and then you can play around with how you want your mana bars to look So that's an easy way for you to be able to configure that to your liking. So now that we've done that, I'm happy with the way that it looks. I'm going to go back down into the general tab and we are still in indicators, which is great. So now that we've got our mana bars configured as well as our aggro raid frames, we are going to look at our health bars. So we're going to come down here to health bars left click on the arrow here there are various options for your health bars I like to choose class colors but you can select solid if you like if you do select solid and you want to um, make it all one uniform color that's this is how you do it All right, so I have mine um, set to class colors. And the reason that I do that is because there are squishier classes than others. Um, and sometimes those are the ones that you need to be looking out for a little bit more. So for example, um, in classic, you, you would do BWL and the mages would do the techie pulls. So you would wanna make sure that uh, the mages don't die as much as possible. But for me, I know that light blue means mages, so squishy characters. So I'm going to focus my heels there. I know that browns are warriors, so they've got a little bit more uh, armor and so a bit more survivability if they're not tanks. So it lets you know who you can look, who needs to be looked out for the most in any particular pull. Also in your health bars, you can come up here and uh, left click into more as you can see my bars here are horizontally people are losing life horizontally but if you like yours from top to bottom vertical then you just left click into the box and that will show you vertical vertical life um, so I prefer mine now horizontally but again, this is for you to um, make it to your own unique play style and whatever fits you. So do whatever you like. Once you're done, you left click into done and that is your health bar done. Okay, so now we have our indicators all sorted. We are going to go into our spell panel here and sort out some keybinds. 
So you're going to left click into the spell tab here. Uh, as you can see, I already have my healing buttons bound, but it's a very, very simple process. It's the easiest part of this tutorial. So as you can see, uh, these are your mouse keys. I've got my left button uh, bound to flash heal rank 5 and my right button bound to greater heal rank 1. So all you have to do is open up your spell book, see which heal you want to allot to which button. And it's as easy as typing in the spell and the rank that you want. And that is pretty much how easy it is. So that's my mouse key so that when I come down here and my indicator shows me that I am targeting myself, when I left click on the button I will cast Flash Heal Rank 5. And when I right click Greater Heal Rank 1. So you can go through all of these different modifiers that you want to. Uh, I've got Shift here as well. Shift left is Flash Heal Rank 7. So and my shift right button is heal rank 4, I'm going to need to change that. But you get the gist of it. The heal spell and whatever rank inside the brackets that you want. So it's, it's as easy as setting those ones up. Next up and where the bulk of my uh, healing spell sit is here in keys local. So as you can see I have my new rank 10 uh, bound to shift E. So really, I'll clear this binding here so that you have an example. You type in the spell brackets, the rank bracket, and then you left click here into the not bound button. And it's easy as clicking on whatever you want your spell to be bound to. So for me, this was Shift E, so I'm going to click on Shift E and it shows up straight away. Um, and you'll just Keep adding your spells here, so when you want to add a spell or add an extra box, you will add, then you will type in the spell that you want to bind, then you'll left click into here, into not bound, and you will bind it to whatever key you want. So for example, I'll just bind that to shift A, even though it's not a spell. But just as an example, that's how easy it is. Add the spell. Type the spell in the rank in, left click into uh, the not bound button, and click on the key that you want to bind. It's as easy as that. Uh, and if you want to remove that whole, this whole bar, you just click on the X here and remove. And that really is all there is to setting up your key binds. It was the easiest part of the tutorial. So there you have it. That is nearly the tutorial complete. Hopefully you've learnt how to do your keybinds, set up your indicators, as well as configure your bars to the way that you like them. Uh, there are a couple of extra things that I thought I would throw in. You don't necessarily need these four uh, to be raid ready, but uh, they are a couple of pretty cool things to know. So I'm just going to add those on now. So we are in the spells tab here. We're going to head down here and left click into miscellaneous. And as you can see down here, you have the option of smart cast. So I have resurrect um, automatically ticked. And as the tooltip suggests, automatically resurrect dead players out of combat. So what you'll do is when somebody dies, you will left click in their raid frame. And it will automatic, automatically cast res on them. And what you'll see is that when you res them, their name will show up in highlighter green. And that's for every person who is being resurrected as well. So it lets you know who in the raid has been or has a resurrect pending. That way there's no uh, crossing, crossover for reses. Uh, another cool thing is the smart cast, cast cleans. One of the not so cool things about that though is that it will cast cleanse before it will heal. Um, and it's for that reason that I don't have that ticked. And it's for that reason that I have uh, my abolished disease and dispel magic uh, bound to their individual keys. But it's an option there if you want to do that. 
Another really cool thing about Voodoo is that you can do a raid announcement for anyone that you res. And the way that you go about doing that is you click here on the general tab and then you go up to the miscellaneous tab and left click into that and as you can see there is an announce resurrection uh, panel there. So in my top panel I have res ink on Voodoo. So when you do that uh, Voodoo is the name of the person that you will res. So when you click on that person uh, their name will show up instead of Voodoo. But you can play around with that and have fun with it as you like. Uh, you can type anything in there as long as you've got Voodoo in there. Uh, that will be the name of the person that you're resing. Uh, one other cool thing just before I go is we're going to click into the colors tab here. So as you can see the debuffs have certain colors. These are the standard debuff colors that automatically come with Voodoo. So your poisons are this teal color, disease is red, curse is purple, magic is purple purple. Actual purple. I don't know what color it is. But when anybody uh, has any of these debuffs, this is the color that they'll show up on. So it'll give you, so you're able as a priest to dispel magic and dispel the, the diseases as well. Um, but also it's good for other fights as well. So you can call out who needs a decurse if you need to in raid or who needs um, to have their poison dispelled as well. So that's another good thing to know about Voodoo. And that is the Voodoo basic setup tutorial complete. I hope that you found this video informative and easy to follow. If you did, please pop it a like down below and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching.